Yasha Uja and I will be explaining PID controller and how encoders are used for feedback. So let's begin. Encoders are electromechanical transducer. That is, they convert mechanical energy, linear and or rotational motion into electrical impulses. Using pulses of encoders, we can determine position, speed and direction of motion. Like in this figure, the disk is divided into 8 parts. Each part has a different combination of slits. So we can determine the position of disk if we know the electrical output and we can determine the direction using two or more signals. Let's take a closer look at rotary encoder. A disk with alternating opaque and transparent section is attached to the rotary shaft. An LED source shines on the disk and on the other side a photo detector is positioned to detect the light passing through. As the disk rotates, the opaque section interrupts the light causing photo detector to generate electrical impulse. The number of pulses corresponds to the angular displacement of the shaft. Linear encoders function similarly but instead of disk, they employ coded scale with unique patterns. A scanning sensor moves along the scale and the variation in the pattern is detected and converted into digital signals representing linear movement. So coming to the main topic, PID controllers. PID stands for Proportional Integral Derivative Controller. It is widely used for control systems due to its versatility and ease. PID controllers give the next output based on the previous output, that is feedback. Therefore, it is a form of closed loop control and in most of the mechanical systems, we use encoders for feedback as it provides precise movement of the state. For example, in robotic arms, we use encoders to know the position of joints. In differential drive, we use encoders to get the velocity of each wheel and many more. Let's dive a bit deeper into PID controller. In PID controller, the error is continuously calculated and based on the difference between desired and current value, the output is calculated. As I told before, it has three terms. Proportional term, which depends directly on error, that is, difference between desired value and current one. Differential term, which is dependent on derivative of error, that is, it is dependent on rate of change of error, DE by DT. Integral term takes the sum of all previously accumulated error and calculate output based on the steady state error. So let's dive deeper into these terms. Let's see proportional controller first. Consider case of this drive. Red arrow depends the direction and black arrow depends the de desired direction. We take error as the angle between actual and desired and the greater the deflection, the more output the controller gives. This coefficient Kp or P is decided optimally. If Kp is too low, it takes a lot of time to reach the desired angle and if the Kp is too high, it leads to overshooting and oscillations and makes the system really unstable. You may think well, proportional controller is good enough. So why do we need the other term? Imagine a stone comes in the path and there is a sudden change in error. Only proportional term won't be able to compensate for it and it will take a really long time and make the system really unstable. So we need a term which is dependent on the derivative of error, that is rate of change of error. That's where the D term comes in. The coefficient KD or D is decided optimally. Too high value of KD results in vibrations and the system become too sensitive to external noises and underdamped. So while low KD will have slow response to sudden change and the system will be overdamped.
now we have taken care of sudden changes too so why do we need the item well we need item to composite for the error which we are getting added due to environmental conditions or other factors for example as this obstacle changes its mean position and creates a constant accumulating error p and datum won't be able to compensate for it as the error is not changing and it is constant that's where items comes in and reduces the accumulating error too high value of ki results in oscillation and unstability while too small value of ki leads to longer time to reduce steady state error as you can see I'll, this low i was not able to make the drive go in the state path while in high high value of ki the drive starts to oscillate upon um, upon the main line so combining these three terms we get our pid controller that is proportional integral derivative now after seeing all three coefficients of that is ki kd kp we should also know how to select them well it is a bit complicated if we know the mathematical model of our drive we can easily calculate it in matlab but most of the times for real systems we don't really know the mathematical system so in most of in projects we usually do it by trial and error use some combinations and if the system is oscillating change ki if it is too sensitive change kd but there are still some ways to calculate it which which is like method like ziegler nicolas method and starting with conservative value and adjust gradually which i was talking about pid based control has a lot of application in industry for example it is used quite heavily in industrial automation for robotic arms and other machinery it is used a lot for motion control system and in temperature control system like if we consider the case of frying machine we need to maintain a constant temperature that's where pid controller is used and the temperature is used for feedback thank you